Hey everyone, today's video is going to be something a little different. Would you believe me if I told you this video was captured, edited, and rendered all in the ROG alloy? Now would you still believe me if I told you I did it all without plugging in a keyboard and mouse? If so, sit back and relax to watch my misery as I attempt to navigate my usual workflow in a very condensed space. Speaking of condensed, the inspiration for this video came from today's product sponsor, Ugreen who had reached out the last week and wanted me to showcase one of their chargers in an Ally-themed video. The charger in question is their Nexo 100W GAN charger. They gave me loose parameters, but to be honest, it sounded a little bit too corporate for me. So instead, I decided to take their 4-port charger, cables, and went ahead and purchased their 6-in-1 USB Steam Deck dock. I did ask them about their docks in my conversation with them, but they had stated that it wasn't a part of their marketing products at this time. All I truly wanted to know if it was a good match for the ASUS ROG Ally. So here I am, packaged full of goodies in my hand. Without even realizing it though, before accepting this deal, I happen to also be using their tablet arm mount that I mount my phone to when I'm filming hands-on stuff. So I guess you could say, I'm green, you're green, and we're all green for you, green. But I guess whatever the current slogan has works as well. Opening up their package, they did send over an additional USB-C and USB-C to Lightning, which will now end up as a great stocking stuffer for one of my family members, as I have no Apple products in my home to support this. So thanks, you green. However, the keen-minded among you may assume that they sent over the USB-C cable because their charger does not come with one, to which you are indeed correct. As in my other recent charger reviews, this seems to be an industry standard, which I am not a fan of. However, getting into the very Google-esque unboxing experience with the pull tabs was a nice touch. Inside it was bare bones, you get the charger and a pamphlet, that's all. This charger will support a wide variety of devices, from Steam Deck, ROG Ally to your MacBook being able to charge the M2 MacBook Airs to 55% in under 30 minutes. Of course, it can handle all your lower power devices with ease. It also has dynamic temperature sensors, so you won't have to worry about any overheating overnight, which is great peace of mind. This charger is lightweight and small enough to rest in the palm of your hand, perfect for travel and business use. Now at this point in the video, you're likely asking, why does this have anything to do with recording, editing, and rendering out a video on the Ally? Well, in my opinion, the Ugreen has a very business or workplace friendly design language for their products. With grey on black and aluminum dock they offer, it would not be out of place to see these products in a business environment. Unlike the latest RGB whatever dock is being spat out this week, I think there is something to be said about having a nice, clean, industrial look. Already thinking in that direction, I wondered if there could be a use case for the ROG Ally being used as a workstation or work laptop replacement. Clearly it has huge limitations, and likely no sane person would do this, however with some help from Ugreen, we can make this a little bit more ma manageable, I think. Obviously the first limitation of using the Ally as a workstation is its size. You get a measly 7 inch screen to work with and pretty paltry battery life. It has no trackpad, just the joysticks and touchscreen to navigate windows and your programs. Ergonomics are also not in its favor, as working with it in hand for long periods of time does become quite uncomfortable, and I find myself needing to constantly readjust. Not to mention, due to the screen size, doing any sort of timeline work would likely prove to be a nightmare. Hopefully, the touchscreen will prove to be useful in this challenge. The power budget of the Z1 Extreme chip inside the Ally is also a bit of a concern. While it does have a pretty high CPU clock speed at 5.1 GHz, the GPU is still pretty limited at 2.5 GHz. In GPU heavy tasks, I can see the Ally being held back slightly due to this. However, for CPU specific tasks, we should stand a fair chance. However, being limited to 30 watts of power plugged in or 25 watts docked with the Ugreen Steam Deck dock, it might not be the best use case for it. Of course, a lot of these solutions can be resolved by Ugreen products. The 100 watt charger can keep your Ally and phone topped up for b-roll shots and stills, while still having one USB-C and USB-A port to spare. The supplied USB-C cable could pull double duty as charging cable and data transfer cable to get my footage from my phone to my Ally. Or when plugged in with their 6-in-1 dock, I could just as easily attach my phone to the dock because thank god for once there is a dock with at least one spare USB-C port. However, I will not be using it. Now, you may ask yourself, why would I choose to do all this on the Ally and not utilize the dock? Well, because it would be too easy in my opinion to say I made this video on the Ally, then to have only docked it, plugged in a keyboard and mouse, hooked up it to a monitor. If I were to have done that, I would have nothing to add other than just the speed at which the tasks were completed due to the APU. 
So while the Ugreen dock does look super nice, and it has two additional USB-A ports, I will not be using them. The only port I'll be using is on the Ally and the cable supplied. To try and pack some information into this video, I decided to run some benchmark numbers. However, not game benchmarks, but productivity benchmarks such as Blender and SolidWorks. In my testing, I applied a manual straight 30 watt profile, uh, boosted up to the max with a manual fan curve. This helped us keep from thermally throttling almost immediately in Blender, which is what happened when we used the stock fan curve profile. Um, when using that one, we were stuck at around 3.7 gigahertz as opposed to our almost four gigahertz with my manual curve. Keep in mind that these tests did boost up to the 42 watt uh, two minute boost period and then came back down to the 30 watts. The total render time was six minutes and 23 seconds for the classroom benchmark. According to Open Benchmark, the uh, Z1 Extreme, it stands in between a Ryzen 7600X and a 5800X3D. Um, these are relatively newer processors and competitive. So on CPU based workloads with a custom fan curve, the chip is fairly comparable to other modern day chips. Running Cinebench R23, we got a multi-core score of 14,314 and a single core score of 1742. Now, to be honest, I don't know what these times and numbers mean. Obviously, yes, the higher the better. The more workflow commands or executions can be completed. Looking at a benchmark tool like Ycruncher, for example, it computes pi and other constants to the trillions of digits. This is an extremely intensive task and a tool I quite often use to test the uh, stability of my overclocks and my desktops. Now moving over to the GPU benchmarking, this is a different task altogether. In work applications, the GPU could be used to render things like animation or CAD designs in SolidWorks. Now unfortunately I'm not the best when it comes to knowing and testing all these things. I did attempt to get a SolidWorks benchmark working, however I had no luck in doing that. Blender as well currently does not seem to support the iGPU. Um, in their GPU accelerated tasks. In the end, I ran a Furmark test at 1080p and received a score of uh, 1715 and an average FPS of 29. The other test would be in rendering this video. However, as I'm not a time traveler, I have no way of knowing this yet. That will come in the conclusion when I compare render times between the Ally and my desktop. Now you may be asking yourself at this point, is he using the Ally to write notes and record benchmark data? Yep. Could I have plugged into the convenient U Green hub and used a keyboard and mouse? Yup. Oh well. You may ask why? I say why not. I can totally see a data analyst living in a space, the pretty small, limited budget, maybe they don't have budget for multiple computers or whatever. It's rarer than a unicorn, yes, but I'm certain they exist. This is more so to prove that while yes it is ridiculous, it is completely doable and made even more practical with the help of products like the Ugreen dock I'm neglecting to use, unlike the charger which has been going strong. Even when I have my Google Pixel book plugged into the charger as well to watch videos on the side, my charger still supplies enough charge to the ROG Ally, albeit not at full speeds to use the 30 watt mode. This is due to my Pixelbook requiring 45 watts of full speed charging. However, you can, if desired, plugged in two more phones, your tablet, whatever, and the Ally. Again, it won't supply full power to the Ally, only if you're using the USB-A port and the top USB-C port. Now that I have all my B-roll, script, and flow of the video, transferring over everything to the Ally was a breeze, unlike typing on this damn touch keyboard, which proved to be as enjoyable as putting toothpicks under my nail beds. You're welcome. I used the Ugreen cable and just downloaded everything off my phone, then transferring from my intro sequence I used a USB-C SD card reader uh, to transfer from my desktop to my Ally. Now that the easy part was over, I began the grueling task of using DaVinci Resolve with a touchscreen and gamepad. This was the dark souls of editing. Editing on the Ally using DaVinci Resolve was and still is a nightmare I don't wish to relive anytime soon. However, I'm going to after I'm done typing this, so that'll be fun. The performance though so far has been fantastic and there's been no slowdowns at all. Again, this machine should be pretty capable, just not practical. At this point, stopping to type out my thoughts, it was just nice not having to fight with the controller and touchpad in DaVinci. Due to there being so many buttons and toggles, trying to hit them with your fingers is damn impossible. Only made worse when you try to make very precise movements with the joystick. It's uncomfortable and annoying. The one plus to all of this is that I can edit at the dinner table or on my couch watching TV. 
so I can be miserable all over the house. I reiterate, no sane person would do this, and I just can't wait for this video to be over. I would say this would be made completely practical with a dock, not just from Ugreen, but from any reputable manufacturer. I have used Altree, Antank, Unitech, and they've all been working great. However, the Ugreen dock is the only one with the USB-C port, which has proven to be useful, just not in this challenge. To close this video off, thankfully, I would say that the Ally has proven to be quite the little powerhouse for my work application. Having all my footage on the SSD has made everything super snappy within DaVinci Resolve. No slowdowns or stuttering spots when scrubbing through my timeline either, which was great. There are no concerns about using this device as a light mobile video editing station. Granted, you use a dock. Otherwise, you're just testing your patience with how long you can last before you throw it out the window. System memory has not been an issue, but if you're doing longer edits, maybe considering dropping the VRAM limit. Again, why did I make this video? Who knows? I originally planned to do a bog standard charger review, but that was too boring as there isn't much to say or show beyond whether or not I could supply the ally with 30 watt charge. As well, I didn't want the video to come off as like too corporate. Having just done two others in a row, I also didn't want to subject the audience to something more of the same. If you guys like this idea, let me know if you've been using or would use your ally in a similar fashion. I would hope with a better dock setup. If you are looking for an Ally certified 4 port charger though, I do recommend you check out the Ugreen's Prime Day deals and they're running from 11th to the 12th of July. The Nexode charger will be coming in at 36% off and others up to 40% off. As always, Ugreen provided no monetary compensation for this video, just the charger and cables for review. I purchased their 6-in-1 dock with my own funds. You can find links in the description. As well, I will post the total render time on the Ally versus my desktop in there. That'll do it for this one. I hope you all have a great day.